room's different. Solid action. Did you make that pillow? I did not make the pillow. Then who made it? Ikea? I don't know. A couple weeks ago, my wife mentioned that she thought our youngest son was ready to start sleeping in a big boy bed and asked if I could build something low. Well, long story short, we started talking about it a bit, brainstorming, and eventually came up with the idea of doing something adjustable height so that hopefully it'll be something that he can use for the next several years. So the basic idea started with a box and inside of it would be slats and a mattress and you'd have quite a bit of adjustability. But if I'm being honest, the furniture designer in me wasn't really super excited about this one. So from there, I started playing around with adding some shape, some cutouts, the semblance of a leg, all sorts of stuff, lots of ideas. And I finally settled on doing something like this. But the problem with this design was that in the high position, it was fine, but you couldn't really get it too low because obviously you'd be able to see all the slats and there'd be nothing to attach the runners to. Then I had what I thought was a genius idea. What if you flip the whole thing upside down and use it like this for the first year or so? Then once he grows and it's time for a higher mattress, you can flip the whole thing back over, adjust the slats, and you're golden. It'll be a better bed for him and you'll have room underneath to store stuff. So that was the idea and I kept refining and refining until eventually I came up with this. I was pretty proud. Well. As it turns out, my wife did a little Googling, and I'm not the first person to think of this idea. But if anything, at least now I knew if other people had thought of and executed this idea that it couldn't be all that bad. And while I was a little bummed, I thought that my bed looked different enough and it's something that we actually do need, so I decided to build it. Okay. Whenever I do these sort of DIY builds, I spend way too much time talking about what tool you can use, but I don't want to do that here. So what I'm going to do is say right here at the top, in this project, we're going to make a lot of saw cuts and you can do that with whatever tools you have and are comfortable with. And all of the saw cuts fall into three categories, rip cuts, which you can do with a circular saw, a track saw, or a table saw. Cross cuts, which you can do with a miter saw, a circular saw, a track saw, or a table saw with a miter gauge or cross cut sled. And curved shaping cuts, which can be done with a jigsaw or a bandsaw. Really the only kind of cuts you'll see me making in this video, which there isn't a good alternative for, are the router cuts. So with all that out of the way, rather than explaining an alternative every single time, I'm just going to focus on the dimensions and shapes of the pieces and you can make the cuts however you like. Okay, the first thing I'm gonna do is make myself a quick little template for my foot shape. So here I've cut out a rectangular piece of quarter inch MDF that's 10 inches by seven and three quarters of an inch. And I'm gonna mark out this shape on the piece. Now I did this by making sure that I was hitting the key dimensions and then just sort of drawing in the curves. That said, if you go to the plan that I'm uploading on Craig's site, you can download a PDF that you can attach to your MDF and just copy out the shape that way. Or you can do what I'm doing, your call. Either way, next I'm gonna use a jigsaw to remove the bulk of the material that I don't want and then do some very aggressive sanding to get to my line. And I think that the big takeaway here is that none of this stuff really matters. It's purely for looks. So just do your best to follow the lines and if you're a little bit off, don't stress about it. Basically, if it looks good, it is good. Okay, now it's probably a good time to talk about material needs. So if you're starting with nothing, you're gonna need about two sheets of three quarter inch plywood, but you're gonna end up with a decent amount of leftover. So I'm gonna be using some walnut veneer plywood for all of my leg and rail pieces, and then some Baltic birch plywood for all of my mattress support stuff. So the first thing that I'm gonna do is get my walnut plywood and cut out 16 rectangles that are all the same size as my template, which was 10 inches by seven and three quarters of an inch.
Now, when I was making my first piece, I started by doing it where the grain orientation was gonna be this way, but I decided that I'd rather have the grain orientation this way. So you're gonna see later that most of the pieces are like that. That said, you could do it whichever way you think looks better. Next, I'm gonna line my template up to my rectangle and use a marker to trace out the shape so that I can remove the bulk of the material on my bandsaw. After doing that, I can use some double-sided tape to attach my template and work pieces together and use a templating bit in my router to start cutting the shape out. So we're gonna do this by working our way down for a few cuts. Then once we have a good ledge established, I can remove the template, flip the whole thing upside down and swap out my bit for a flush trim bit and complete the shape that way. So I would recommend putting on a good podcast to listen to or something because we're gonna have to repeat this process 16 times in total. Now, in reality, the way that you're gonna wanna do it is trace out all of your shapes, cut out all of your shapes on your bandsaw or jigsaw, route your first ledge on all of your shapes, then swap out your bit and complete the route on all of your pieces. That's gonna make it a little bit faster than switching everything every single time and going through the pieces one by one, but either way, it's not gonna be fast, so just settle in and get it done. So the reason that we have to do 16 of these is because we need to laminate them into pairs. And then each pair of pairs is eventually gonna get joined together like this to make a total of four feet. But as you can see here, this distance and this distance are equal at seven and three quarters of an inch, which means that we need half of our pieces to be an inch and a half narrower than the other eight pieces. So the next step will be cutting eight of those pieces to six and a quarter inches wide instead of seven and three quarters of an inch. From there, I'm gonna pick which pieces I want to go where, giving preference to what's gonna become the outside faces. So it's a good idea to orient them like this as to not get yourself twisted around and then use some kind of labeling system that makes sense to you. Then we can go ahead and glue and clamp together our 16 pieces into eight pieces. While those are drying, we're gonna head back over to our piece of plywood and we need to make ourselves four bed frame pieces. Now again, remember that you can cut these any way you like, it doesn't really matter. But what you wanna end up with is two pieces that are 26 and a half inches long and two pieces that are 63 inches long. And all of them should be five and a half inches wide. Or really more importantly, if you maybe were off a little bit when you made your template, you want the width to match this face here on your leg pieces. By the next morning, the glue of my foot assemblies was dry, so we could pull them out of the clamps and keep working on them. So the next thing that I did was make a little mark so that I could cut a bevel on the inside front of either piece. And the mark that I'm making here is just to keep myself organized. So to make this cut, you could use a router with a chamfer bit or any saw with your blade tilted. And actually, if you go the router bit method, you could also swap this out for a round over or whatever you like the look of. Either way, the important thing here is that we want to err on the side of cutting this detail less than halfway into the pieces. And that's so that it's going to be proud right here. To assemble everything, I'm going to use a combination of dowels and pocket holes. And honestly, this might have been overkill, but I know that kids like to jump on bed, so I'd rather go with a little too much than not enough. So after doing that, but before actually assembling anything, I'm also gonna put three pocket holes into the inside faces of my shorter foot pieces. And that'll be for joining the sub assemblies in a little bit. Okay, now we can use a little bit of glue and a few clamps to hold everything stationary while we drive our screws to put our four sub assemblies together. Then once those are done, we can get a few more clamps, making sure that our pieces are nice and flush along the outside and drive everything together into one big bed frame. Either way, the next thing that we're gonna do is round over everything. So I decided to go with a quarter inch round over along the vertical edges of all four corners, and then an eighth inch round over along every other edge. So after doing this and then some sanding, there isn't a sharp corner to speak of on this piece. So if anybody decides to bang their knee or head or whatever on it, well, I'm sure it's not gonna feel good, 
at least it shouldn't split anything open. Just good old fashioned blunt force trauma. For the mattress support, I might have gone with a bit of overkill again here, but the reason I did this is that it gave me a little bit more margin for error. But what I'm gonna start off by doing is cutting a bunch of strips of Baltic birch plywood, which isn't super fun to watch. So instead, I'm just gonna give you a detailed list of what I needed to cut, which was six strips at 75 inches long and two inches wide. And we're gonna glue these into pairs so that we end up with three strips that are 75 inches by two inches by one and a half inch. Then I'm also gonna need to cut 15 slats that are just shy of 39 inches long. So let's say 38 and seven eighths of an inch by three. And this is optional, but I'm also gonna round over all of my slats as well as my 75 inch long assemblies, just because I guess I was in a rounding over mood. Anyway, and then I'm also gonna cut myself pieces like you see in this drawing here, and that's so that I can create these two sort of cradle pieces. Then I'm also going to cut myself a bunch of blocks that are about one inch by one and three quarters of an inch by three quarters of an inch. And in total, I'm going to need 28 of those plus four more that are three quarters of an inch by three quarters of an inch by one inch. And all of these are going to create a nice spot for our slats to sit. And they aren't necessary but I think that they make putting the bed together faster and they also keep the slats from being able to wiggle around too much. So in this shot, I've got both of my runners clamped together and I've marked out where the slats are gonna sit. So since they're three inches wide, I marked out a three inch wide spot at the center, then worked my way to either end making a two inch gap, three inch slot, two inch gap, and so on until I reached the ends. Then I could just use a little glue to attach those blocks that we made. To attach my runners to the inside faces of the bed, you're gonna have to decide how high you want your mattress to be and then kind of work backwards. So for example, let's say that you want your mattress 12 inches high. Well, I know that my mattress is eight inches thick and that's gonna sit on top of three quarter inch slats and that's on top of a two inch runner. So knowing all that, I can cut myself a few little spacer blocks that are one and a quarter inches wide and then rest my runner on those and use a few screws to attach to the inside face of my rails. For the cradle pieces, we want this part of the cradle to match the exact height of the bottom of our runners. So again, we're gonna cut ourselves some spacer blocks to hold these in position and then attach them at the center of the inside face of the head and footboard. So if you want more info on building this piece, check out the written plan. And if you want to check out a DIY bookshelf that'll go great with this bed, go watch this video. All right, see you in the next one.